Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having an awesome week. Um, in today's video we're going to be making a pet teepee for the ferrets. So a lot of times people make these for their dogs or their cats but of course I'm going to do one for my ferrets. Uh, I think it turned out pretty cute so let's just jump into the video. Okay you guys so for this project you are going to want to have your sewing machine First and foremost, you're going to have a pair of scissors, um, something to write with, mark your fabric with. Um, I'll be using a yardstick or something that measures at least 36 inches long. You're going to need four wooden dowels. These are 3 eighths wide and they measure 36 inches long. I got them at Joann's. They were about $2 a piece. You can get them at Michael's. You can get them at AC Moore at all kinds of places like that. You're also going to need some sort of twine, twill, something sturdy to tie off the top of your teepee. You're gonna wanna have some kind of clips or pins. You're gonna need at least two yards of fabric. Now you can use, I'm using a flannel cotton. You can also use, a lot of people like to use canvas or an outdoor fabric just because it's more sturdy. Um, that's absolutely up to you. I, for the ferrets, don't feel like I need canvas or that that's necessary. So I'm not gonna be doing that. I am also going to be using these cute little pom-poms for my to put around my opening. So I got these at Joann Fabric. Um, you can get them in pom-poms in color. You can get it without pom-poms. You can get sequins. There are so many possibilities for this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut out our triangles or our sides. And we're going to also cut out our bottom. Mine will have a bottom. More than likely I'm going to make it a solid color and maybe even fleece just because I want it to be soft. So um, you are also going to want to have, if you're choosing to put a bottom on your TP, you're going to want to have a piece of fleece. And I will put the measurements to my TP in the description. Um, so you would probably just need about a half a yard of fleece to make the bottom. Okay, so what I am doing now is I've opened up my fabric and I'm laying it so the right sides are facing down. And now we're going to measure out four triangles. They need to be... 26 inches across the bottom and 31 inches tall and we're going to cut four of them okay so to make your triangles you're going to start at the end you're going to measure 26 inches across which i did and then you're going to mark at the 13 that's the center point and you're going to draw a line straight up that center and then after you draw that line which we did here you're going to go and you're going to measure 31 inches. So from the corner up to that line in the center, you're going to do 31 inches and you're going to make a line and then you're going to do the same thing. So then you're going to measure up 31 inches here and you get your triangle in order to get four triangles out of this one, these two yards of fabric, you have to go to the other side of the fabric and put your triangle this way. So this is my second triangle to do my third triangle. I have to come down and start again on this side and I'll do my fourth triangle that way. That's how you get the four triangles out of the two yards of fabric. If you do it any other way, it won't work. And now we are going to cut them out. Now that you've cut out your four triangles, you can put them on top of each other. You're gonna measure four inches from the top and then you're gonna cut that off. So if you want your um, tent to have a bottom, then you can do this next step. If you do not want your tent to have a bottom, skip this next step. I am going to put a bottom in my tent. I'm also going to make it fleece and I'm going to make it in a solid color. Okay, so if so now that I'm going to have a bottom in mind and that's fine. If you are ha if you don't have a bottom, that's okay too. The next step you're going to want to do is you want to going to take all four of your triangles. You're going to um, turn them over so that the wrong side is facing down. You want to take the top where you just cut that four inches off and you want to roll it back about a half an inch. You're going to do this to all four triangles and you're going to want to make sure you roll it back evenly on all four. So if you did a half an inch on one, do a half an inch on all four. Um, and basically you're going to just stitch across. What you're doing is you are making a clean edge. So you're just going to go to your sewing machine fold down that edge on all four triangles and stitch across. If you do not cut a floor for the TP, you're going to want to do the same exact thing to all four bottom pieces. Roll back about a half an inch all the way across the bottom on all four of your triangle pieces as well and stitch across. 
if you're putting a bottom on and you've opted to put to make your TP one piece that includes a bottom, you do not have, you can skip that step that I just, you don't have to sew the bottom. So just do the top. Okay, so you should now have all four of the triangles and the top should be, have some sort of stitch, whether it's a straight stitch, decorative stitch across the top to make a finished edge. Now pull out one of your panels, scoop the other three up and put them aside. The panel that you kept aside, you kind of have two options for your opening. You can, cut straight down the center and I have a line here for when I drew my triangle. So if you wanted a curtain opening, you would cut up the center about 16, 15 inches, 16 inches, and then you would fold it back about a quarter inch, both openings, um, and then you would stitch it so that you would have the edges look kind of like this and finished. If you were gonna do a curtain opening. Um, if you do a curtain opening, you probably aren't going to do an attached bottom either because that you wouldn't be able to attach the front. It would get a little bit more complex. Um, so I am going to do an attached bottom and I'm going to actually be doing a circle opening. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to get a shape that's big enough for my ferrets. Now, if you're making this for a cat, this will not be large enough. You're going to want to make it bigger. What we're going to do is we're going to find the center, which I already know because I have my line here. I'm going to come up. I want my ferrets to be able to get in it, so I don't want to make it so high that they can't get in it. So I'm going to put it a couple inches from the bottom, um, and we're going to put this in the center, and I'm just going to trace around step what I'm going to do next is optional. So if you guys have ever seen me make a snuggle sack, a hidey hole snuggle sack or anything like that, you'll understand why I'm doing this. Um, normally when you do a circle like this, there's a piece on the other side. So when you pull it apart, it kind of has a pretty nice finished edge. If I don't put a piece of fabric on the other side of this, it's going to be a raw edge. It's literally going to cut a raw edge out and that's fine. Um, I am going to decorate it with those pom poms, but if I have a pretty finished edge, it just looks nicer for me in general. I just like that. So what I'm going to do is I went and I had a little extra scrap fabric left from my fabric. I am going to put this piece that I have left where it lines up over top that circle. So um, this, I'm literally only using this to complete, make a finished edge. This is optional. You do not have to do this. This is serves no purpose other than to make your edge look pretty. You wanna just make sure you have it right sides together and that that extra piece of fabric is covering that entire circle. I'm gonna pin this in place. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch all the way around the circle, completely around. Okay, so now that you've stitched this should be completely closed. You should have stitched all the way around the circle. What you want to do now is cut out that circle. Don't cut your stitch line. So now you've cut out the circle. You got this weird white extra scrap. Grab it by its little corners, push it through to the other side. and then you should have it, should look something like this. You're gonna have to kind of play with it and straighten it out. You can even turn it over and you'll see kind of on the back, it looks like this. We're gonna cut off the excess, but what we're gonna do first, or what I, what I choose to do is I'm gonna top stitch the, around the circle. Um, that will keep it looking nice. And then I can cut off that excess fabric on the back that I don't really need. But if you notice your edge is super pretty instead of just cutting out and having raw edge because you took a pair of scissors and cut the circle, which again, you can completely do. Um, but for me, it just looks a lot nicer if you finish off that edge. So what I'm doing now, I am just making sure that the seam, the seam I've created is nice and neat. I'm gonna top stitch around the circle. Some people have a hard time top stitching around these kinds of circles, but if your needle moves on your machine, you're gonna wanna move your needle as far to the right as it will go and then keep the edge of your presser foot around this circle and just stitch a nice pretty top stitch. Okay, so now that you've done that, you should have a circle that looks like this. And if you guys, if you can see the top stitch, I'm gonna just cut off the excess, this excess fabric. It'll look like that on the inside and this on the outside. Now. I'm gonna go ahead and attach my pom-poms because once I start doing this next step, I'm not gonna wanna come back and try to do that. It's gonna be easier for me to do it now. So I'm gonna stitch these on. If you, you can also glue these on, but with ferrets, I'm very hesitant to glue anything. So what I'm gonna do is I am fortunate enough to have this piece here where I can stitch 
So I'm going to just um, clip this in place and then I'm going to go to my sewing machine and I'm going to use a stitch to stitch on stitch this on and I'll probably use a zigzag stitch. Okay, so now that you've done your circle or your front, however you chose to do that, you're going to want to lay one of your triangles facing right side up. I'm going to start with my front piece, grab um, another one of the triangles. You're going to put them right sides facing together. You're going to line up the tops. I'm just going to clip it so it stays in place and lined up at the top. And then you're going to line up each side. <clears throat> now this next step is, is important. So what I'm going to do is I am going to clip these together. You're just going to clip one side. You're going to leave the other side um, unclipped because we're not going to stitch this yet. So you're going to go to your sewing machine and you're going to stitch a quarter inch seam all the way down from the top to the bottom. Okay. So now that you've stitched the one triangle, you should have, it should be like this, but we need to do a little bit more with the stitching. We need to create a pocket for this dowel to slide in when we're done. So how we're going to do that is we're going to take a roller on the side that we just stitched the quarter inch seam, we're gonna measure three quarters from that stitch line. So over three quarters, we're gonna draw another line and then we're gonna stitch. So basically we're gonna have two stitch lines on each, uh, on each long side. This is my original quarter inch stitch line. This is my three quarter of an inch away. So once I stitch all the way down, three quarters of an inch away from that original line, this dowel will slide right in. Okay, so once you've done that, you should have something that looks like this. Now you need to start adding in your other sides. You need to complete the TP. So you're going to take the next TP, the next triangle, you're going to match it up to the sides and you're going to do the exact same thing that you did over here. If you're not putting a bottom on your TP, you can go ahead and stitch across this um, pocket that you created. That way your dowel doesn't come through the bottom when the TP is done. If you are adding a bottom to your TP, you don't have to do that because when we add on the bottom, it will close it off and the dowels will not be able to go through. Now that you've sewn the whole thing together, you should have something that looks like this. Um, all of it should be sewn together. When you flip it, it should look kind of like a big TP skirt. So if you chose not to do a bottom, hang on for a second or fast forward into the video to where we start to add in the rods. If you are putting a bottom on, stay with me. We're going to do that and we're almost done. Okay, so if you're adding your bottom, you're going to want to get your square, whether it's fleece, whatever it is. And what you're going to do is you're going to match the corners where the rods go to the corners of the square. So you're going to want to flatten these down so that the rods still fit in there. And you're going to put this right sides together. Put a clip there. Then you're going to take your edges and you're going to line it up. You're going to go all the way around making sure that your corners match up to your corners. Okay, so now that you've clipped your bottom into place, you're just going to stitch all the way around. Okay, so now that you've attached the bottom, you're going to just stick your hand in your opening and flip it right side facing out and just poke out your little corners. Make sure everything's stitched nice and good. Um, I'm probably going to take this into the ferret room to set it up because I don't know if I want to try to carry it around after I put the pig, the sticks in it. We're going to set it up here. So got your rods, got your TP. You're going to want to put a rod in, put them in caddy corners. So you're just going to put them in those, um, little slots that you made or those little pockets that you made for your rods. You're going to put two in first and then the other two in second. You're going to push them into the corner as far as they can go. And we're going to tie these together. So how you do this is up to you. There are people that are really good with knots and then there are some that are not. <laughs> so I'm going to hold it in place and I'm going to wrap it around. Um, basically you just don't want this to move when this is said and done. So once you get this tied up pretty good, you want to add in your other poles. And then you got to straighten it out the way you want it. And then you got to tie it tight so that it stays in place. 